Now, usually we will start off questions from subs by giving a special shout out to the newest team, Keep It Clean patron, who in this case is Reginald G. So, hey, Reggie, Top G, we appreciate you. Um, and then we will proceed to answer whatever Reggie's question was. But in this case, Reggie did not send a question, which is OK. It's OK. He just decided to become a patron to support, which we appreciate. So uh, let's get into the first question from Mr. Jason G. Another top G. Um, and he said, Engraven, takes breath. I think it's time to teach the ignorant and save the babies. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's see what he's talking about. He said, I now truly believe for the majority of Ravens fans, and he put quotation marks on that, that have such obtuse takes and opinions towards Lamar's contract clearly are either too young or too oblivious to remember the years between Dilfer and and Flacco. We were in QB purgatory with only brief reprieve in the form of Steve McNair. If anyone truly believes the Ravens should not pay Lamar or let him walk, they need to learn or relearn their history. Talk to him and hashtag team keep it clean. So Jason is not very happy with a lot of people's takes on the Lamar situation. Now, I wouldn't even blame it on people being too young because, hey, it's no problem if somebody's a young Ravens fan. Everybody wasn't watching the Ravens since they became the Ravens, and that's fine. Um, and even if it was somebody who doesn't know anything about between Dilfer and Flacco, that's fine too. Everybody's situation for watching whatever whoever their favorite team is is not going to be the same. So you can't hold that against people. And, and I'm sure there are plenty of people who have been around the in, entirety of the Ravens and seen all the quarterbacks and still been like, no, Lamar can walk. No, the Ravens don't need to sign Lamar to no crazy deal. Again, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Um, but with the, the, anybody who doesn't feel like the Ravens should sign Lamar, okay, so what should they do? Do you think they should start it over, run it back? Start from scratch, go back, what, to the draft, they go with Tyler Huntley, go try to get a free agent quarterback. Just, it, it, I mean, anything's a risk. Anything, any way you decide to do it would be a risk if you're going to decide, you know what, all right, Lamar is not the one. Um, but with Lamar, it's like, why, why would you want to start over if you have something so special already? It's like... It's like you being with somebody. It's like um, you, 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 you meeting the, the, the love of your life. Well, it could be the love of your life. You, 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 done been, you done been in some previous relationships before. And, oh, man, some of them seem like they were promising, but they, they were not promising at all. And, boy, you done been through some drama. You done been through some heartache. You done been through a lot of pain. And you, done been, you done been through a lot. But then you meet this one person. And this one person is so different than anybody else that you've ever encountered before, relationship-wise. This person is just, they're an anomaly to everything that you had been used to dealing with. And even, th there may have been some relationships that had a lot of success, but in the end, you, you didn't have success in the long run. But you meet this person and they are just so special. And they bring you a lot of happiness they bring you a lot of joy. They bring you a lot of success. And, and the, the thing about them bringing you a lot of success is that you, you and this person haven't even maximized the full potential of your relationship yet, but you are still both very happy. Why would you walk away? Yeah, this feels like a dream. Next question came from Heather, who is also a Team Keep It Clean patron. Appreciate you, Heather. She said, hello, Engraven. I hope you, your family, and the whole Team, Be King, team Keep It Clean family can talk are doing well. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, I don't know if y'all ever noticed, um, but in this jacket, like, um, I guess that's what happens when you wash it. But the eye, the eye in Baltimore is missing. 
Um, just a little fun fact. But anyway, uh, she said, do you think that the Ravens have addressed the issues with cover zero? It scares me because of the Dolphins game coming up and being the last season they lit Lamar up. It has been a concern of mine ever since. Let me know your thoughts. Seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Um, and it's not even necessarily just cover zero because Dolphins, even they didn't really do a zero that much. Um, but Dolphins just, they disguised it so well because they will look, they will be in a cover zero look where it looked like they were blitzing everybody and they were going to have everybody else in man coverage, but they would drop some people back. They would blitz some people, but then they would drop some people back. So it was the continued disguising of the blitzes that really messed the Ravens up. And we won't know until we know. It's one of those things we won't know till we know if the Ravens are really ready for it, if they really countered it or not, if they really are going to have success against it or not. I would think that they would. I would hope that they would, uh, but really only time will tell. Next question came from my boy A.W. Juice, man. He said, Ingraven, I often wa wonder and scratch my head about this, but who was the better cornerback tandem from 98 to 2001, which featured the likes of Chris McAllister, Dwayne Starks, uh, and then a little of a decade and some change after the tandem of Jimmy Smith, Laudarius Webb, or now and current present uh, of Marlon Humphrey and M.P. Juice, man himself, Marcus Peters. Give me your thoughts, my brother. Have a beautiful and blessed day, man. Well, obviously, the ones that had the most success uh, will be uh, McAllister and Dwayne Starks, Super Bowl champs. But um, uh, well, but Jimmy Smith and Lardarius Webb, they also Super Bowl champs. Uh, but then you got Marlon Humphrey and MP Juice, man. Um, I would say, oof. I would actually say the ones that haven't had a Super Bowl yet. Um, cause Chris McAllister, he, he used to be my favorite, uh, player. He used to be my favorite NFL player. He used to be my favorite NFL player. And Chris Webber used to be my favorite NBA player. Back when I was like in the NBA heavy, cause my favorite team was the Sacramento Kings with, you know, Mike Bibby, Pages Stajakovic, Vladi Divac. Um, ooh, Doug Christie was on there too. I, I had loved the Kings, but anyway, and, and those, those Lakers games, oh, they used to hurt my heart so much. I'm like, oh, yeah, King's about to go win the NBA championship this year, and then the Lakers games will show up, and it'll just uh, it'd be so annoying. But anyway, um, I, will say the, I will say the tandem now. Um, well, mm, mm. it's crazy because Jimmy Smith and Ladarius Webb, I feel like they were pretty good, but then just injury, injuries messed up both of their careers bad, bad. Um, but, so I would say Marlon Humphrey and MP Juice, man, because you got a physical cornerback, um, who, and Marlon Humphrey pretty good Like he be saying some outlandish stuff Like on Twitter and stuff But as a cornerback he's actually pretty good um, And then with uh, Marcus Peters he just, he's, a, he's like Ed Reed playing a cornerback position Because he's such a ball hawk And it's crazy how great of a ball hawk he is So I, I would actually have to go with the cornerback tandem That we have right now And hopefully we get to see them back together in action For the first time in over a year on Sunday. Next question came from my boy Philip L. He said, now with Kyle Fuller and Juwan James out for the season, that means more playing time for Pepe Williams and Amore Davis. I know they will probably bring up Ardarius Washington from the practice squad along with offensive tackle Davis Sharp. Now, do you think EDC could be thinking about a couple of free agents who are out there like uh, Chris Harris or Joe Hayden? Yeah, they're both veterans in their 30s, but what if another one was to go down? Take care. Now, I think he sent this before um, they signed TJ Carey. Uh, but, yeah, looks like he got the answer to your question uh, as far as them bringing in a veteran. Um, and I wonder, I, I, I wonder, because I say beggars can't be choosers, but at the same time, if you feel like that's not what you want, then hey, you don't have to take it. I wonder if um, with a Chris Harris or a Joe Hayden, if the Ravens would have offered them to, oh, yeah, you can come come through. We, we, we want to sign you, but we want you on a practice squad first. I wonder if they would have taken it. Just, that's just a thought that's in my head. Um, and then he also said, I forgot to ask, uh, don't you think this new Cleveland Elf logo is too childish for an aggressive man in sports like the NFL, especially on the field that they play on? I mean, not really. I, I, I don't know where that came from. I don't know what that's about. But no, I mean, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's too childish. I mean, they look, look on the side of their, their, their helmets. On the side of their helmets, they got, they got a bunch of nothing. There's nothing there. So there's nothing aggressive and there's nothing childish. It's just a bunch of nothing. So I guess them getting that logo in the middle of the field, that's a good start. Next question came from my boy Kevin S. He said, hey, Graven, why is no one talking about Mike Davis only getting two carries? I understand he fumbled. That's it. That's it. The, the question could have been cut off right then and there. He fumbled. You know... How Harbaugh is about fumble. He don't play about, well, the, if you, certain players. 
<laughs> like, if you're not at the top of the depth chart, then he don't play about fumbles. If if you're not tippy top starter and this, then he don't play about fumbles. If you a starter, like a regular starter, then he might be able to play play. But but if you not, you're done. That's that's how we knew as soon as he fumbled that, even though he recovered, we knew his day was done. A wrap. Uh, but anyway, he said, I understand he fumbled, but maybe he fumbled because you got him the ball late. Uh, also, I would have rather kept Beatty uh, instead of Justice Hill. Well, I mean, they kind of did keep him kind of sort of. He's on a practice squad. Um, but, yeah, I guess with Hill, they just they wanted somebody who's a little closer to a veteran, somebody with a little more experience. Um, I mean, Beatty could have been in there, too. Beatty could have been doing his thing in there, too. Um, and they... They still have that op op opportunity. They still have that option. Like, if they want to call Beatty up, hey, Beatty, come through. You playing this week. So he, he still has a chance to get in because um, it's not like he's completely off the roster. He's just on a practice squad. Said anyway, one last thing. I really think Lamar doesn't respect Greg Roman's play calling. Lamar came up under Bobby Petrino, and he believed in Lamar more than anyone. Well, I mean, he was in a more pro-style offense in college. Uh, now it's been just a lot of pistol, pistol, pistol. Uh, but hopefully this year, I mean, it's year five, <laughs> but hopefully this year they can just take another step forward. That's, that's what we're hoping for. Just a little bit more growth. Um, that's, that's all we can ask for. Just, just more growth from the offense, more maturity from the offense, more advancement and involvement from the offense. And he said, Giro doesn't give Lamar audibles. Ravens after the season, go get Bobby Petrino <laughs> as your offensive coordinator. I, I, I don't see them doing that um, cause, I, cause I don't think he's one of their guys it, it, Whoever they move next year for offensive coordinator I think it's going to be either somebody already on staff uh, or, or one of their guys from the outside Next question came from my guy Rave Kingdom He said, ain't Raven Kyle Hamilton got juked and missed tackles in week one against the Jets Ever since preseason game uh, one Besides that fumble recovery He's either got juked, missed tackles, or blown coverage uh, I'm not giving up on him, but he's making it hard. What's your thoughts on him and going forward? I just, I think that there's a lot of nitpicking because I also saw a stat where uh, passes that go went in his direction uh, during the preseason they were all incomplete. Every last one of them, they were all incomplete. Um, so there's that take do with that what you would like. I mean, I, I think he'll be fine. Um, it's just a matter of, again, still getting in the groove. It's, it's literally been, he's played in what, a total of two games and one of them counted? He's played in two games. Because he played in, in the, the games that he played in the preseason, if you add them all up together, that's about one game. And then he played in one game in a regular season. Like, I, I don't understand um, the people just trying to just write him off like that. And no, like, it, it'll come, it'll happen. Every single safety that come out, even corners or secondary players, whatever, they ain't all going to come out, oh, getting all these pick sixes and fumble force and fumble recoveries and making this, that, and the third tackle. No, for some people, it takes a little more time than others. It takes time. Whether somebody first round pick or not. So I'm not tripping on Kyle Hamilton right now. I think it's way, way too early to be freaking out about Kyle Hamilton. Say, oh, man, I don't know if he got, no, it's too early. Oh, is he a buzzer? No, it's too early. Oh, man, is he going to be good? No, it's it's too early. The last question on this episode came from my guy Marcus B, Mr. Bashadi. He said, Engraving is getting spicy. This contract situation could set the organization back for a while. Hear me out. I mean, or hopefully they take care of it and they're set for a while. But anyway, he said, I just saw a video from Von Miller speaking on Lamar Jackson's contract. And of course, he's on the player side. But the thing that stood out to me uh, the most is that you could hear the respect that Von Miller has for Lamar. And when I think about it, that's all you really hear from opposing players. Nothing but respect. I honestly don't believe Steve Bishotti realizes that all of the league is watching this contract situation. And depending on how it plays out, it's going to do more than just affect the quarterback situation. Oh, for sure. I mean, he definitely knows all the league is watching. All the owners are watching. You know, that, that's what he's concerned about the most. All the owners are watching. Um, but anyway, uh, he said, you know, we, the loyal fans, are watching. Free agents are watching, including the upcoming free agents currently on the team. That's a good point. And that's something that a lot of times I'd never think about with this Lamar Jackson contract situation. That is such a really good point about pending free agents that the Ravens could have where the Ravens either got Lamar or they don't got Lamar. And that could impact their decision moving forward. 
Um, obviously, money is the biggest factor with most free agents. This is money. Like, and I don't blame them. This is their job. They're trying to get paid. So anybody trying to get paid at their job, I have no problem with that. Anybody trying to get more money from their job, I have no problem with that. Like, anyway. Uh, but, yeah, that's a really, really good point. Um, because they could be watching and like, oh, oh, Lamar not going to be there? Ooh. <laughs> Maybe I'll look at some other offers, but we'll see. He said, if I'm a free agent, I'm not going to, ba I'm not going to Baltimore. They're already not a destination spot. Ex for example, Florida, California, New York, depending on the sport. Uh, and, oh, by the way, they don't have the most attractive philosophy. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, for that part, I disagree. Because it depends on what position you play. If you're offensive lineman, oh, yeah, Ravens is your dream. If you're a fullback, oh, yeah, Ravens are your dream. If you're a running back, oh, yeah, Ravens are your dream. If you're a tight end, oh, yeah, Ravens are your dream. If you play defense, oh, yeah, Ravens are your dream. If you're a pass catching wide receiver, you're trying to get your numbers up, trying to keep your numbers up, then they're a nightmare. Uh, I said, um, and oh, by the way, they're probably going to play you out of position and, uh, and out of the position where you thrive the most. And oh, by the way, they're cheap, too. I mean, they've been cheap for a while. Um, OK, OK. They've always been cheap, but I digress. Now, again, back with the cheap stuff with the Ravens is they're not a cheap team. They're cheap at certain positions. Um, those are, but they're not overall. They're not a cheap team. But again, for those premier positions, that's when the money like, I ain't really got it like that. Anyway, it says still, you would think that it would be different this time around with the QB situation. You would think that they would have learned from the previous experience with Joe Flacco. Imagine what the players currently on the team are thinking as this thing plays out. And I know I'm not the only one who saw how different Lamar's demeanor was on the bench whenever the camera was on him. He very well could have just been locked in. But I don't know when Graven something was different. I, I I thought the same thing too that his vibe was just different during the game, um, so I don't know. Well, let's keep going. He said, despite the positive reputation this organization has built for itself, players and fans are seeing the lack of appreciation toward their so-called franchise quarterback. Harbaugh can spew all he wants about how Lamar's going to be here for a long time, this and that, blah blah blah, but he ain't the one signing the check. Looking back at Bashadi's comments about how Watson shouldn't have been the first one to get a fully guaranteed contract begs the question. What's his reasoning as to why Lamar shouldn't be the second or in his own mind, the first? But best believe this, what you won't pay, someone else will. And I, for one, won't be mad at Action Jackson one bit. I agree. I agree 1,000%. Want him to be a Baltimore Raven. Want for the Ravens to sign him. Want the Ravens to want him to be a Raven. Um, but if he goes elsewhere, I completely get it. I would completely get it, completely understand. Go get your bread. Go get your bread and, and go have continued success. Go do your thing. Um, I would hope that wherever he goes, wherever he ends up, whether it's with the Ravens, whether it's with somebody else, I just really hope that, obviously he's going to get his money, but I also hope that wherever he goes, they maximize this guy. Hopefully the Ravens can do that this year, though, but we'll see. Um, he said, but you know what they say. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and ex again and expecting different results. See, is that really the definition of insanity, though? I know a lot of people say that. That's that saying. But it just doesn't make sense to me. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I, I thought insanity is just being crazy. But hopefully the Ravens don't be crazy enough to let Lamar Jackson go. And now the real last question, because somebody literally, he just sent this. I'm recording this at 4.23 p.m. He sent this at 4.21 p.m. So I literally got this email while we were recording. It came from my guy, Isaac. He said, hey, Raven, hope all is well with you. I believe a big storyline to look for in the Miami game is if the Ravens have the ability to beat Miami's cover zero look and be effective at scoring I mean yeah that's that's definitely it because you know the talk is going to be oh 2021 last year you remember what the uh, Dolphins did to the Ravens in that game da, 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 da. oh yeah so for sure you a thousand percent right he said I predict at the very least if Greg Roman is unable to scheme an offense against the, against this look it may put him on the chopping block Ooh, you think so oh maybe I could see what you're saying because there's not only going to be a lot of internal eyes on this, but a lot of external eyes on this. So people from the outside looking into, and that's going to be the talk, 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 talk. And you know, Ravens, they listen to a lot of that talk, 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 talk. They don't always go by it, but they certainly listen to it and they hear it. And they let it be known that they hear it too. But with Greg Roman, um, this is a big year for him. 
Um, it's a big year for really a lot of people on the Ravens, not just Greg Roman, just a lot of people. Um, but I, I do see what you're saying. Uh, how just because this is like, all right, you're going to get the same team. They they got some different players and whatnot. Uh, they got a few different coordinators and whatnot. But you see, you're going to get the same team. How are you going to do it? How are you going to fix it? How are you going to adjust? And he said, P.S., I don't know why, but this team is really giving me 2012 vibes for some reason. <laughs> All the best. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, that, that always reminds me of when people, um, when uh, every year, every year, never fails, never fails, no matter what year it is. Uh, fans will be like, oh, man, this, uh, this, year, this year feels different. This year feels different. And I say, well, well, yeah, it does feel different because it's a different year than what we just went through. All right, so I was just editing the most recent, well, what you've been watching. I was editing that this morning. By the way, right now, the, the time is 9.08 a.m. It's Friday the 16th. So I was editing a video that you were just watching. And then I checked. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Because we got two new Team Keep It Clean patrons. I recorded all that stuff yesterday. But then this morning, I saw we got two new Team Keep It Clean patrons. So I said, you know what? No, 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 no. We got to add them. We got to add them to this video. So shout out to Justin. And shout out to Danelle. Appreciate the both of y'all. And actually, one of them, Justin, sent in a question. He said, now my phone don't want to load. Oh, there you go. He said, I love Lamar Jackson, but. Oh, but. <laughs> this guy. He said, I also love Engraving. Let's go. Hey, I love you too. We love you too. Uh, appreciate you supporting me. And then, now the real last question on this episode. I done said last question like. Two, three times now. But this is the real last one. It came from my guy, Nick Brick. He said, are you at all worried about Giro and or Lamar and or Harbaugh giving up on likely? No. 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 If we had some sort of patterns that showed that, then I'd be, oh, okay, wow, man, they might give. We haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen it yet. One, We can't go by just one game. We can't. It, it's just way too early. To, to jump to something like that, in my opinion. Um, now, the way <laughs> the way Harbaugh talked about it, oh boy, he was like, oh, he, he called him out specifically and, and talked about the holding call, and, and he just, like, he, he spoke doghouse talk about him in the last presser. Uh, and then when he was speaking to Prochet with the holding call, he just called him uh, a veteran. He said we had, a, we had a veteran that had a holding call on the outside, too. But he ain't name drop pro shit. But would likely he he'll go into details about this and that. He got to do this and do that better. Da, 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 da. And I was like, ooh, ooh, okay, okay, oh, okay, chill, man. But um, no, I I think it's just it's, it's way too early. But he also said we all know the first game was a letdown. But I really hope that even if it takes him four to five games to figure it out, that no one loses trust in him. The investment and patience will be worth it, in my opinion. Also, bonus question: What do you think is up with James Prochet? I don't know. I don't know. I, I do not know. It's, um, he got like, what, three, four snaps, five, maybe five on Sunday? I don't know. Let's, uh, again, same with James Prochet. Let's not jump to anything so quick, but let's just see. Because y'all know, I said it on here, I was for sure. The way that they were uh, propping him up with the, with the presses and stuff, um, I just, I really thought, because I did not, I did not see Devin DuVernay as wide receiver too. I didn't see him as that. Because I didn't think the Ravens saw him like that either, but based, off of, based off of how they had used him. Because they had only used him like a gadget guy, jet sweep king. But Devin DuVernay has been wide receiver too. I mean, last game he was wide receiver one. But I thought it was going to be Bateman as wide receiver one, Proche as wide receiver two, and Duvernay, DeMarcus, well, actually, when they signed DeMarcus Robinson, I was thinking, okay, Rashad Bateman, DeMarcus Robinson, then Prochet in the slot. They used Duvernay still on the jet sweeps and stuff. But it was obviously Bateman was out there, but a lot of Duvernay, a lot of DeMarcus Robinson, a little tiny, eeny, weeny, teeny, 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 teeny of Prochet. So I don't know. I don't know, but let's see how they move in this Dolphins game um, and how they either have or don't have him involved now i know y'all not gonna believe me because i already said that we would we did the last question i done said last question like three four times now the time right now is 9 16 i don't even know if y'all can see that or not i don't know if it's clear or not it's 9 16 a.m we just finished editing those last two questions 
from Justin and from Nick Britt. We just finished editing those two. And then all the questions that you saw before that were questions that we did last night. We recorded it last night. So we were done. But then, literally at 9.13 a.m., we got another question. Y'all, let me take a break. Nah, I'm playing, though. Next question. And this is the real last question. I feel like y'all know when I'm editing or something. So y'all, that's when y'all like, oh, he's editing. Time to send a question. But anyway, last question. Came from my guy, Joshua. He said, are the Ravens financially broke and not telling anybody? See, I wonder if, um, because I just listened to this clip from the Pat McAfee show where uh, they were talking about that. Uh, and he was talking about, well, if, uh, the Ravens, if, if, if the Ravens couldn't write a, a fully guaranteed check for Lamar, they can't come out and say that. Especially if uh, when, when, a, when a team in their division, the Browns, they just did that with Deshaun Watson. But he's like, they, they can't come out and publicly say, oh, yeah, we ain't got it. Uh, but anyway, let's see what he had to say. He said, what's up, Engraven? I see you at it again, keeping the Raven vibes going in season and out for the flock. Great work, my guy. Hey, appreciate you, man. Uh, this may be a simple and dumb question. No. There's a, well, no. Nah. There's no such thing as a dumb question because if there was a such thing as a dumb question, then that would mean they were, it was a dumb person. So, no. Because if somebody just doesn't know something, they, don't just, they just don't know it. And so you can take the time to educate them on it. Y'all educate me on a lot of stuff every single day. Just with y'all questions, with y'all answers, with everything. So I appreciate y'all because I got a lot of questions. <laughs> a whole lot of questions. But y'all answer a lot of them. So I appreciate y'all. Anyway, he said, this might be a simple and a dumb question, but someone got to ask it. Do you think the Baltimore Ravens actually have the money to pay Lamar? The entire contract episode has been suspect. And knowing the Ravens front office, they find ways to save <laughs> He said they find ways to save money. Waiting for Lamar's price to increase week after week anti ch seems anti-cheap, anti-Ravens. So that will make you think that they may be anti-signing him in the long term. That, that, that's why I keep saying that I'm just, I'm worried about it. I'm very worried about it. And I am not confident right now in the Ravens keeping Lamar Jackson for the long term. Because the way that they've been moving about this thing is just weird, man. It's really weird. Now, again, apparently they offered him something, and, but obviously they couldn't come to terms. And Lamar was like, eh, no, nah, no thanks. They offered him a deal, but it wasn't good enough for Lamar. I just, I don't see, if, if they couldn't meet his terms now, again, the price is only increasing. It's only going up. What's going to make them change and be like, oh, well, now, okay, we can meet his terms now. We didn't meet his terms last year. We didn't do it the year before. Oh, but we can meet it now. I, I just don't see it. I hope, I really hope to be wrong about that, but I don't see it. I don't see it at all. But again, hopefully everything works out. But I, I just don't see it right now. But we'll see. Anyway, it says, uh, waiting for Lamar's price to increase week after week seems anti-cheap, anti-Ravens. They actually could have paid Lamar back when Josh Allen did his contract. Even when Mahomes did it. Even paying for a premier wide receiver has been an issue. Something's funny. The cap is only cap when there's no real capital at the bank. Ooh. Ooh. Why you had to end question from subs like that? Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. Shout out to Graven.